Today we are starting with the sale of goods act, and when we talk about sale of goods act, my dear friends, sale of goods act is very very simple act and very uh, we can say the uh, simple concepts are there, and uh, all of us are uh, face daily in daily routine. these uh, things situations and when we talk about the legal perspective so it is beneficial not only from the subject point of view but also from the uh, you know our daily routine or daily requirement so when we talk about sale of goods act so this particular act specifically talks about the sale of goods so when we talk about sale of goods so sale means transfer of ownership and when we talk about of goods so goods are here defined under section 2 sub section 7 which talks about all kind of movable property which can be sold off and ownership can be transferred or the goods which are attached to land and these can be separated for the purpose of the sale and thirdly other than money or currency if there are share and stock in which the ownership can be transferred from one party to the other so this particular act talks about that when the ownership will be transferred what the goods means and what will be the rights and duties of the buyer duties of buyer and seller right so in this particular case the meaning of contract because when we talk about contract of sale so meaning of contract remains same as per the indian contract act so for uh, in this particular uh, act we come across the four chapters the first chapter will be the intro chapter where we will discuss about the contract of sale we'll discuss about the difference between sale and agreement to sell we'll discuss about that what are the prerequisites for the formation of the contract of sale and the second chapter is about the conditions and warranties so when we talk about conditions and warranties so these are the attached conditions or requirements which must be fulfilled and if not fulfilled then the buyer and the seller right can be interfered or these can be you know will not be performed or uh, non performance would be there or what are the different rights are available in case of non fulfillment of conditions and warranty then the third chapter talks about the transfer of property so when we talk about transfer of property this particular chapter we don't uh, need to discuss in the much detail but in this case of transfer of property mainly talks about that what is the point or at what moment the ownership is transferred from one party to the other party then there comes certain requirements which talks about doctrine of caveat emptor that is uh, we talk about let the buyer beware in case of sale and in case the sale is being transferred by the non owner what will be the rights in that case and the last one is in case of non performance so this fifth chapter talks about the rights of an unpaid seller so if the goods are being sold off and the seller is not being paid the money so he'll be known as unpaid seller so what will be the rights available with the unpaid seller this will be in the last chapter so these will be uh, if we talk about the questions from this particular section so one question for 15 marks will be there and out of 15 marks again there can be the combination of 10 or 5 there can be called three question 5 5 5 or there can be the combination of 8 7 or 9 and 6 so several combinations can be there so in out of these five chapters in intro we have the difference question in case of conditions and warranty question is there transfer of property half question doctrine of caveat emptor half question rights of an paid seller is the half question is there now let's start with the chapter 1 when we talk about introduction 
and nature of contract of sale so we have to understand that what are the prerequisites for the sale of goods act so as we have discussed that sale of goods act is the special act and when we talk about the special act the subject matter is defined by the law along with the subject matter the rights and duties of the parties are defined within the law and as well if we compare with the general contract act so there only the stress upon is that whether a particular situation or circumstances exist as a contract or not what will be terms and condition which will be the subject matter etc uh, what will be the rights how it will be performed when it will be performed everything is decided by the parties themselves but in the special acts the subject matter how it will be performed what will be the rights and duties and certain conditions are specifically mentioned in the contract and the general rules of the formation of the contract also exist so this we have to understand now we talk about that how the contract of sale can be formed so in the contract of sale we say that the indian contract act provisions shall remain applicable until unless there is any contradictory provision now when we talk about the meaning of uh, contract of sale so section 4 talks about that where one party transfers the ownership in the goods to the other party for some consideration it is called as contract of sale so it means that there are two parties in the contract of sale one is known as seller the other is known as buyer so one party is transferring the ownership in the goods to the other party so the person who is transferring the ownership would be known as seller the person to whom the ownership is being transferred is known as the buyer and there must be some price in form of consideration so 100% barter is not accepted as per law but some price along with the exchange of goods is acceptable as the consideration so these are the basic essential so it says that the contract of sale of goods is the contract whereby the seller transfers or agrees to transfer the property in the goods to the buyer for a price so here we have to understand that either there is a transfer of ownership or there is an agreement to transfer the ownership agreement to transfer the ownership right so it means that if there is a transfer it will be termed as the sale and if there is agreement to transfer this will be known as agreement to sell right so contract of sale includes sale and agreement to sell as well because there is a either transfer of ownership or there is agreement to transfer that ownership is there now if we talk about the essentials quickly so there must be two parties that uh, these parties must be different from each other sale by oneself transfer of ownership by one party to himself only will not be regarded as sale so whenever we talk about the contract of sale that parties there should be the contract between the two different parties this is the essential then the subject matter of the sale must be goods so we say that there is if we talk about the goods so we talk about the movable goods if we talk about the movable goods these are covered under the transfer of property acts so when we talk about movable goods so goods means every kind of movable property other than actionable claims and money but it includes shares and stock growing crop grass and things attached to or forming part of the land which are agreed to be separated from before sale or under a contract of sale so this definition of sale, uh, goods is under section 2 subsection 7 so in this case when we talk about the second essential of contract of sale so the subject matter of the contract must be 
सेल ऑफ द गुड्स अगर हम सिर्फ गुड्स को ट्रांसफर करते हैं फॉर सम स्पेसिफिक पर्पस तो वो आपका आ जाता है कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ बेलमेंट राइट एंड इफ वी ट्रांसफर द ओनरशिप इन द गुड्स देन दिस पर्टिकुलर थे सिचुएशन बिकम्स द कॉन्ट्रैक्ट ऑफ सेल राइट then another essential is price so the consideration must be in terms of money so when there is only barter or only exchange of goods it is not regarded as sale to agar wo particular situation sale nahi hai to as per the sale of goods act jo aapke rights hai aap wo exercise nahi kar sakte right so however goods may be sold for consideration which may partly be in form of money or partly in goods but some consideration needs to be there to agar aapko consideration ka chapter yaad ho uske essentials yaad ho to humne iske andar discuss kiya tha that inadequacy of consideration is immaterial right i hope you remember this thing we have this concept we have discuss in much detail other than that we have discussed that every contract must be supported by consideration and another concept here we have discussed is that consideration must have some value in eyes of law right so if we understand all the three essential requirements of valid consideration then in this particular situation we have to understand that there must be consideration uski chahe koi bhi value ho but it should have some value in the eyes of law along with that even if it is inadequate or even if you are not able to balance partly in goods or uske exchange ki exact value nahi hai but still till the time the consideration is there it will lead to valid consideration so when we talk about sale of goods act consideration is important here but it must be in terms of money if it is only in terms of goods then it is not considered as valid consideration as per sale of goods act and we have already discussed that agar contract act ka kisi bhi point ke upar sale of goods act supersede karta hai then it will have the value or it will be acceptable then we talk about transfer of property when we talk about transfer of property so there is journal property and there is the special or specific property right so when we talk about special or specific property so it means for some specific purpose the goods possession of the goods is being given to the other person and as we have discussed in the last chapter that there is a contract of bailment when goods are being transferred for some special or specific purpose when we talk about the journal property in the goods so journal property in the goods means the ownership in the goods so when we talk about ownership in the goods so in case of sale ownership is to be transferred ownership in the goods is to be passed from seller to the buyer so in that situation the transfer of property is one of the important essential in the sale of goods act for the formation of contract of sale so a transaction of sale involves transfer of property property is of two types journal property special property journal property means ownership of the goods special property means special interest in the property to agar journal property hum transfer karenge the other person will get the right as just in rem and if we will transfer the specific property the other person will get the right of just in personam right so in this particular case in case of sale whether it is a sale or agreement to sell journal property ownership is to be transferred from seller to the buyer and in case of contract of bailment only special property is 
given their possession of the goods is being given from bailer to bailee then all the essential elements of valid contract needs to be present in the sale of goods act so all the essentials we have already discussed intention to have legal relationship offer and acceptance valid consideration capacity of parties uh, free consent legality of object agreement expressly not declared void and possibility and certainty of performance and legal formalities if required in the particular situation so all these things are required for the formation of the contract of sale then in continuation we have to discuss the difference between sale and agreement to sell so when we talk about the term contract of sale contract of sale is a broader term which includes sale and agreement to sell as its definition says that the uh, when a, one party transfers or agrees to transfer the ownership in the goods to the other party for some consideration contract of sale is formed so in case of sale the transfer of ownership happens at the time of formation of contract jis time sale of aapka contract of sale enter hua form hua aapne ownership transfer kar di so in that particular situation it will be regarded as sale in case of agreement to sell this transfer of ownership will be at some future date at some future date there can be certain situation that goods needs to be packed or goods needs to be manufactured goods needs to be designed as per the requirement of the buyer goods needs to be procured from some other place or something else is to be re required to be done some finishing or something is needed for the particular goods so in this particular situation we agree that this goods will be transferred or will be given to you but the promise is being made for the transfer of the ownership but ownership is yet to be transferred so when the ownership is yet to be transferred so this is not sale this is agreement to sell so it means the ownership will be transferred at some future date ownership will be given at some future date so in this case if we talk about sale and agreement to sell so there can be and if we, even if we talk about transfer of ownership so it can be it's not required that ownership is transferred only by transferring the possession of the goods so this can be through the possession of the goods or this can be the through the documents of title so in this particular situation ownership is not related ki agar aapne possession of goods de di to wo aapki ownership bhi transfer hogi for example there is the contract of sale or sale on approval basis so you have transferred the possession of the goods to the other party but once he approved then only the ownership would be transferred otherwise the seller is still the owner of the goods he can take back the goods from the buyer so in that situation the sale will take place the ownership will be transfer at some future date when when the buyer is going to approve the goods so in this case we say that the contract of sale may provide for the immediate delivery of the goods or payment of the price or both or for the delivery or payment by installments or that delivery or payment both shall be postponed so in this situation there can be a circumstances that this can be happen immediately transfer of ownership possession price etc so it will be regarded as sale but once it is at some future date then it will be known as agreement to sell so the sale is a broader term which includes both now whether a particular situation is a sale or whether it is agreement to sell it will depend upon the question that whether ownership in the goods has been transferred or not so if the ownership is being transferred it will be sale if the ownership is yet to transfer it will be known as agreement to 
set. So now let's discuss the difference between the two terms. And as I have already told you, that every time the difference question we have to prepare well, and there are likely chances that this difference question will come in the exam. Now, when we talk about the difference, so before starting from the tabular form, you just need to explain the meaning of contract of sale, stating that it, it includes sale and agreement to sell both. And then you start writing the difference between the two terms. So already discussed the meaning of the contract of sale. So now when we talk about the difference between the two terms, the first difference or major reason between the difference of the two terms is on the basis of the transfer of property. So if the transfer of property has taken place, then it is regarded as say, uh, sale. And if it is yet to be transferred, then it will be known as agreement to sell. So property in the goods is to pass at some future time or subject to fulfilling certain conditions. It should be noted that payment of the price and delivery of the goods is not essential for passing of property of the ownership unless agreed otherwise. So it means that if we talk about agreement to sell, ownership will be transferred at some future date. So even if the possession of the goods is being given, even if the price is being paid, it will not be considered as sale unless until it is the part of or condition of the contract for the transfer of the ownership. Then when we talk about the nature of contract, so in the case of sale, you have already transferred the ownership. Along with that, the price is also being paid. So it, is, it will be known as the executed contract. So on the basis of performance in the first chapter of Indian Contract Act, we have discussed that the, on the basis of performance, the contract can be executed contract or it can be executory contract. And in case of executory, it can be unilateral, that only one party is yet to perform, or it can be bilateral, where both the parties are required to perform the contract. <coughs> then another difference can be on the basis of risk of loss. So when we talk about risk of loss, we say risk passes with the property. And when we talk about risk passes with the property, so here property means the ownership, right? So whosoever is the owner at the time of loss of the goods is going to bear the loss. Here I can share uh, two examples. For example, I went to a particular shop and uh, I have selected certain items and I have, uh, you know, set aside it, those goods and I have paid the price as well, right? So now when I have selected the items, I have set aside it, I have paid the price and seller has accepted the price. So it means that sale has taken place. And once the sale has taken place, it is the ownership is transferred to the buyer. When the ownership is transferred to the buyer, so buyer has got the right of just in rem. So buyer can use the goods, buyer can do whatever he wants to do. Now in this case, if I have selected the goods, I have paid the price, I have uh, collected the goods. So I simply say uh, to the uh, seller that I want to go to collect certain goods from the other shop. So I will pick up my packet while coming back. So it means my packet, I have selected the goods, paid the price, I am the owner. Now, in this case, I have left the packet at his shop and while coming back, I will collect the packet. Now in this situation, keeping the goods at the seller's shop is the contract of bailment wherein I have entrusted the seller and told him to keep my goods in the safe custody. So I am the owner. So in case of sale, if the risk happens, the goods are lost or goods are destroyed or the fire breaks off in the particular shop, 
then buyer is going to suffer the loss because he has already got the ownership and the risk passes with the ownership with the property so it says that risk follows property whosoever is the owner of the goods at the time of loss will bear the risk to is particular situation mein owner kaun hai buyer to buyer is risk ko bear karega so in case of sale of goods the goods are destroyed the loss will fall on the buyer even if goods are in the possession of the seller तो अगर इवन दो आई हैव केप्ट द गुड्स लेफ्ट द गुड्स एट द सेलर्स प्लेस स्टिल बायर इज गोइंग टू बियर दैट लॉस सो रिस्क ऑफ लॉस विद द बायर इन केस ऑफ सेल बट इन केस ऑफ अग्रीमेंट टू सेल ओनरशिप इज येट टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड सो इन दिस केस सेलर इज द ओनर ऑफ द गुड्स राइट सो द सेलर इज गोइंग टू बियर द लॉस इफ द लॉस हैपन्स the same example i say i have set aside the goods but i have not paid the price i have selected the items and i told the seller that while coming back i'll make the payment and i will collect these goods i had just selected short listed the goods but while coming back before i come the particular goods were destroyed so in that particular case the seller is going to bear that loss because ownership is yet to be transferred to the buyer in this particular situation right then there comes remedies in case of breach of contract agar aapka uh, what you call it uh, uh, in case of remedies in breach of contract to agar wo sale hai to us case mein buyer ne price pay nahi kiya to is case ke andar there is the seller has the right that he can file a suit for price or even if the goods are in the possession of the seller he can demand the price because the ownership has already been transferred and in case of agreement to sell ownership abhi transfer nahi hui hai to is case mein seller ke paas ek hi right hai ki wo goods ki damage ke liye agar aapka goods ko kuch damage hua hai ya goods ka kuch loss hua hai to uske liye case file kar sakta hai for example the example sale on approval basis right so in this case if there is some loss or the buyer fails to return the goods goods can be taken back but any damage or any loss to the goods can be claimed from the buyer then there comes the difference on the basis of effect of resale to so, is sale ke case mein aapka seller dobara use resell nahi kar sakta until unless wo unpaid seller hai within the meaning of section 54 and in case of agreement to sell definitely the seller is the owner of the goods so he can resell the goods but in that case if buyer so have suffered some loss or damage buyer can claim the particular remedy then in continuation there is the difference between case of journal and particular property so already discuss ki sale ke case mein aapka जो प्रॉपर्टी है वो ओनरशिप ट्रांसफर हो चुकी है और उसके अंदर आपका बायर को राइट right मिलेगा जस्ट इन रेम का इन केस ऑफ अग्रीमेंट द ओनरशिप इज येट टू बी ट्रांसफर्ड एंड बायर विल गेट द राइट ऑफ जस्ट इन पर्सन देन देयर कम्स द डिफरेंस बिटवीन ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ इंसॉल्वेंसी ऑफ बायर एंड इंसॉल्वेंसी ऑफ सेलर सो वेन वी टॉक अबाउट द टर्म इंसॉल्वेंसी in case of term insolvency what will happen that whosoever becomes the insolvent <clears throat> the goods will go to the official receiver right so in case of sale who is the owner of the goods buyer is the owner of the goods and in case of agreement to sell who is the owner of the goods seller is the owner of the goods right to is agar koi insolvent hota hai to owner of the goods ke paas jo hai right hai goods ko lene ka to agar aapka buyer insolvent hoga right if there is buyer becomes insolvent aur uski goods official receiver ke paas jayengi to agar buyer insolvent hoga 
तो इन दैट केस अगर वो सेल है तो बायर इज दी ओनर तो इन दैट पर्टिकुलर सिचुएशन दी गुड्स जो है आपकी गुड्स है दिस विल बी दिस विल गो टू द इन केस ऑफ सेल वेन द बायर बिकम्स इन सॉल्वेंट and buyer is the owner of the goods so even if goods are in the possession of the seller it will go to the buyer right and if buyer becomes insolvent and it is only the agreement to sell the owner is seller the goods will go to the seller even if the goods are in the possession of the buyer to so, yahan pe even if the goods are in possession of seller गुड्स जो हैं आपकी बायर के पास चली जाएंगी और इस केस के अंदर इवन दो द गुड्स आर इन द पोजीशन ऑफ द बायर गुड्स विल गो बैक टू द सेलर सो हुसो एवर इज द ओनर द गुड्स विल गो बैक टू हिम और अगर सेलर इन सॉल्वेंट हो जाता है तो उस केस में सिचुएशन आपकी रिवर्स हो जाती है कि इन केस ऑफ सेल ओनर कौन है बायर तो इवन दो द गुड्स आर इन द पोजिशन ऑफ द सेलर वो बायर के पास वापस चली जाएंगी और अगर वो अग्रीमेंट टू सेल है तो अगर सेलर इन सोलवेंट हुआ है और ओनर इन सेलर है तो चाहे वो गुड्स बायर की पोजिशन में है वो गुड्स वापस सेलर के पास आ जाएंगी सो लेट्स रीज दिस कंसेप्ट दैट इफ देयर इज इन सोलवेंसी ऑफ द बायर सो इफ द बायर बिकम्स इन सोलवेंट बिफोर पेइंग द प्राइज द सेलर कैन नॉट रिटेन द गुड्स एज द बायर बिकम्स दी ओनर ऑफ द गुड्स बायर ओनर है तो बायर के पास चली जाएंगी और अगर सेलर कंटिन्यूस इन केस ऑफ अग्रीमेंट टू सेल सेलर कंटिन्यूस टू बी द ओनर ऑफ द गुड्स सो इवन दो बिकॉज द गुड्स नो ओनरशिप इज बींग ट्रांसफर टू द बायर सो एज सच सेलर कैन रिफ्यूज टू डिलीवर द गुड्स और अगर वो बायर की पोजिशन में है तो सेलर के पास राइट right है उन गुड्स को अपने पास वापिस लाने का similarly if seller becomes insolvent then in that particular case the seller becomes insolvent before delivering the goods to the buyer the official assignee or receiver of the seller cannot refuse to deliver the goods to the buyer kyunki buyer uska owner hai to wo aapka buyer ko goods jo hai aapki transfer ho jayengi so in this particular situation The goods uh, official receiver भी buyer को goods देने के लिए मना नहीं कर सकता और अगर आपका agreement to seller है और agreement to sell है तो उस केस में अगर seller insolvent हो जाता है तो official assignee और receiver जो है वो seller goods को buyer को देने के लिए refuse कर सकता है और अगर buyer के पास आपका उसकी possession है so he can take back the possession of the goods so I hope uh, uh that's uh, it uh, for today's class then about type of the goods and remaining other things we will be discussing in next lecture meaning of goods as per section 2 sub section 7 we have already discussed so i think uh, just uh, let me show you the slide once again uh meaning of sale of goods act we have discussed in case of introduction and nature of contract of sale we have discussed the meaning what do we understand by contract of sale in case of essential we have discussed that there must be two parties to the goods then we have discussed that there must be the price of the goods transfer of property ka kya meaning hai aur indian contract act ke essential present hone chahiye then we have discussed that contract of sale includes sell a sale and agreement to sell and we have discussed the difference on the basis of meaning transfer of property nature of contract risk of loss remedies for breach of contract effect of resale then uh, uh, which property is being transferred and insolvency of buyer and seller respectively so now we can uh, take up the questions if any but uh, otherwise i think that this is a simple concept uh, we'll more discuss in detail about the rights